When done right, real estate investing can be absolutely life-changing. When done wrong, it can be a freaking nightmare. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys the four things you need to know before you buy your first rental property. The last one I think is really gonna surprise you guys. The first thing you need to look for is the neighborhood. I wanna make sure that any property that I buy has a strong rental market in its given area. So I like to draw a perimeter around the property and see, do the properties actually move on the rental market? If I see a bunch of properties up for rent that aren't actually renting, that's gonna be a problem for me. Because what I I do when I go to buy the property as I either work with the seller and do what's called a seller finance or I go work with the seller and take over their mortgage payments something called subject to so that means every month I'm making a payment to somebody I need to make sure that I'm actually gonna be able to rent out the property and I'm not gonna be losing money every single month so the neighborhood is super important so the second thing I look for is exit strategies I will never buy a property and I've made this mistake and I've bought a couple properties this way and I got burned both times it has to have multiple exit strategies meaning that the property can't just do one thing. I want you guys to think when you buy a rental property, it's like buying a small business, right? And it has to be able to cash flow in the best case scenario in multiple ways. So I see a lot of people get in trouble because they go buy a house that looks great on Airbnb, but they got crushed when Airbnb started to go down or when COVID hit. They're like, what do I do with all these properties? Same thing if I can only do a midterm rental or a pass split or a rental property or a wraparound mortgage or a lease option. There's so many different things you can do with a property. I just want to make sure that I can do more than just one. Thing. Next thing is highest and best use. So when I buy a property, I want to look for sweet benefits of what I could do when I own it, right? One thing that's very popular right now is like adding what's called ADU or additional dwelling units to properties that increases its cash flow potential. A lot of people were converting their garages. A lot of people were taking sheds out back and making them uh, like one one casitas and being able to rent those out separately. Like what's the highest and best use for the property? Is there some sweet benefit of buying it? So if you're looking to either buy your first one to 10 to 15 properties, that's kind of where you're at. At, you want to ideally buy the very best deals and the best deals come from properties that have different use cases again going back to exit strategies you can do multiple exit strategies because you can do different things with the property those are the ones you want to look for okay last one I think you guys are really gonna like this one this is one that I overlooked when I first bought my I don't know my probably my first five properties and that is latent defects based on the age of the property so when you go buy a property you can check out on the neighborhood the rents are really good you can get a good deal on your monthly payment and everything else looks really solid and highest and best use like we can do all these things and then you bought a property that is either uninsurable because the piping is really old or the electrical is really old and you got to get it re-permitted to do any work or like this property here like you see the bathroom like there's literally a toilet beside the toilet like I should have bought this property before I bought it but luckily because I bought it the right way I can actually do multiple things with this property like we're planning on taking this one from being a rental it was rented out for $17.50 a month and I paid $9.50 a month on owning the property so it cash flowed really well or we're thinking about taking it and completely renovating it and renting it out per room this area we're renting out about $300 per week per room so that brings in about $4,800 to $5,400 a month on this one property so luckily because I bought it the right way I can do multiple things with it but I would have been screwed if I could only rent this property out it would not have been a good investment because the age of this home I'm gonna have to redo everything electrical you see like all the stuff that's around this place the floor the obviously the carpet's really old but that's not the problem it's the stuff that you can't see is the problem the stuff that's behind the walls so really take that in consideration before you buy your next property the age matters and with older properties you can run into buying properties that cannot be insured because the piping is old the plumbing is old the electrical is old uh, the structure is old the foundation has problems so many different things so definitely take that in consideration before you buy your next one so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video we put our lives on the line for it from homeless people to potentially breaking in and Vince almost getting hit by a car there at the end look we do this stuff for you guys we have a free and when I say free I have nothing to sell you this coming Saturday March 16th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. It's gonna be all about creative deal structuring, showing you everything from start to finish, how do you put these deals together to getting it sold and getting tenants in place if that's your end goal, or maybe you just wanna wholesale them, how to put these deals together so you can maximize your profits. Link is in the description. Again, completely free, got nothing to sell you. Hopefully I'll see you there, and hopefully you enjoy this content. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.